I just shot the last roll of Sinistro film I'm ever going to buy, and I'm going to share the whole roll with you, all 36 frames at the end of this video. So before I sat down to record this video, I put up a poll on my community tab asking y'all if I should post a video just featuring this roll of film, or put up a video featuring the roll of film and my commentary on the recent controversy surrounding Sinisto, or just skip the video altogether. Well, at the time I'm recording this video, 82% said that they wanted to see a video with the roll and the commentary, and that's what you're watching now. If you're looking for a complete hatchet job in Sinisto calling for boycotts and all that, you're not going to get that in this video. If you're looking for a fanboy view of Sinisto that completely condones and agrees with all their business practices, well, you're not going to get that either. You see, if you've lived as long as I have, and if you've even halfway paid attention to the world around you, you realize that a lot of things in life aren't just black and white. We're going to explore some of the shades of gray today. First, a little background. Since you're watching this video, you probably already know that Sinisto distributes Kodak motion picture film that's been stripped of its Remjet layer and repurposed for use in still film cameras. Stripping the Remjet off makes it easier to develop this film in just your standard regular C41 chemicals instead of the more labor-intensive ECN2 process. Sinisto's been doing this for a decade now, and they do it well. They put out a very high-quality product. It's pricey, but that's true of a lot of films these days. Recently, Sinistos received more competition in the Remjet Removed motion picture film game as more companies started coming out with these kind of films under names like Amber, Grain, Reflex Labs, often at a lower price. So competition's good, right? So what's the controversy? Well, in early October 2023, reports started popping up on Reddit and blogs saying that Sinisto was threatening legal action against people selling their competitors products. Specifically, it was said that Sinisto was trying to shut down mom and pop sellers on eBay and Etsy selling Reflex Labs 800T. Cat Labs, who also sold Reflex 800T, went so far as to say that Sinisto actually sued them, alleging trademark infringement over the terms 800T, 800 Tungsten. When I heard all this, I got pretty hot. I went to Reddit and Instagram. That just fanned the flames. If there's one place that's known for nuance and thoughtful discussion, it's internet comment sections, am I right? My knee-jerk reaction was to start creating snarky, kind of hateful memes. I didn't post the most incendiary ones, but I did post this Monopoly one to my Instagram stories. So as clever as I thought of as being, I really only had one sided story because you see, Sinistro's response to these initial reports was crickets. They waited an excruciatingly long time to put out any kind of statement whatsoever. And by the time they did, they'd already been savagely roasted online and whatever potential legal issues might have been looming, they had clearly already lost in the court of public opinion. People were super upset, calling for boycotts, the pitchforks were out. Sinistro's statement said that they did not sue anybody, which I can believe because no court cases have been presented anywhere on the docket anywhere that I know of. They did say they issued a cease and desist letter to Cat Labs, but that it was actually at Cat Lab's request. Sinistro also said they sent out courtesy notices to apparent trademark infringers, but Reflex Labs fired back said they had no courtesy notice whatsoever. All that happened was Sinistro delisted their eBay, Etsy, and Shopify listings. At the heart of this drama is the fact that Sinistro obtained trademark protection for the terms 800T, 800 Tungsten, T800. Now, since these are descriptive terms, for instance, 800 is the film speed, T is the for tungsten, which is the white balance. Some people argued that Sinisto shouldn't even got this trademark in the first place, and they didn't actually at first. They were denied the claim, but then it was reversed and they won it on appeal. Now, at the risk of sounding a little bit like Dr. McCoy from the original Star Trek series, I'm an eye doctor, not a lawyer. I can't pretend to understand all the legal intricacies of all these terms and all these trademark issues, but it does to me seem like a little bit of a stretch to trademark the number 800 and the letter T, although Sinisto did argue that 800T took on secondary meaning, and I will give them this, if I told you I was gonna go out and shoot some 800T, the first film to come to mind would probably be Sinisto's 800T. Now where I don't think the statement holds water is when they said that they were enforcing these trademarks to avoid consumer confusion. If you look at the packaging for the Amber films, the Grain films, the Reflex Labs, they look nothing like Sinistral products. So the fact that Sinistral said that basically we as the consumer couldn't tell these things apart just means that Sinistral things were idiots, which again, not a good look. The other thing that looks pretty bad is the appearance that Sinistral is only going after the small guys, the little resellers, and leaving the big retailers like B&H alone. B&H sells Amber, which it bills as T800, so 
maybe you can make the argument that Sinistral thought the T-800 would not hold up in court as infringement as much as 800T. Or maybe Sinistral was just afraid of suing something big, a big corporation like B&H, which has the resources to fight back. The other thing is Sinistral tried to keep all this quiet, and again, that's pretty gross too. So to me, while it doesn't look like Sinistral has done anything illegal, it also doesn't look like they've won themselves any new friends in the film photography community. Uh, my personal opinion is I think they had a bit of an overreach. I think that they think we're stupid, and I think they're not really crazy about all this new competition. Now, I'm not worried about Sinistral coming after me for anything I've said here because, number one, I don't think I've said anything completely defamatory or inflammatory. And number two, I guarantee you that Sinistral doesn't even know I exist. And that's because I'm over 30. This is not a criticism, but more of a pointed observation. If you look at Sinistral's online presence, their creator spotlights, their promotional materials, they are exclusively, almost aggressively youth-oriented. And I get it. From a business standpoint, that makes sense. You don't want to target old dinosaurs like me that are going to die off sooner than later. Of course, the way of the future is the youth, so I got no beef with that. I do find it pretty ironic, though, that for a company that's placed so much importance on appearance and being the cool kid in town, that almost overnight, the reputation has plummeted, and I think they really have eroded a lot of the goodwill that they've been spending the last 10 years trying to build with the film community. Will they lose a third of their revenue or market share like Bud Light? Time will tell. I'm not calling for a boycott, but I did tell you at the beginning of this video, I'm also not planning on buying any more Sinistro film, and there's really a few reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is this film is expensive, and I'm cheap. Uh, another reason is I've shot a ton of this film, I already know what it can do, and I'm just kind of looking for something new. Along those lines, I'm kind of getting uh, kind of over the whole halation look, and I figure if I want to shoot neons at night, I could shoot something like Lomography 800. I know Lomography sources a lot of their color films from Kodak, but uh, one pretty cool thing is Lomography's lowered the prices on a lot of their 120 film recently, which I think is a great move for the community. And if I want to shoot movie film, don't care about the whole halation look, I can always shoot movie film with the Remjet still on. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, but I've got an ECN2 kit at home, and it's really not that hard to DIY. If I do occasionally want to still get that halation look, again, I've got options. Last year, I shot some Reflex Labs 800T, had a very good experience, really liked it. When this whole controversy broke, I actually ordered a roll of Amber T-800 and had a great experience shooting that too. I haven't shot the grain film yet. That's next on my to-do list. So those are some of the main reasons I'm not planning on buying any more Cinestill. But I can't ignore the other big reason, which is the ick factor. I just don't have the same warm, fuzzy feelings I have for Cinestill once in the past. Again, I wish them no ill. I don't want to pile on Cinestill. But I also think that my support and money are better spent elsewhere. I spent the last five years here on YouTube trying to build a positive community around my channel. And I just, I don't like to be in a negative headspace. So if the comments get too profane or abusive, I'll probably just delete them because it's my channel and I can do that if I want to. Having said that, uh, over the last five years, I can count on one hand the number of times I've had to remove comments. So that's typically not a problem here. Okay, rant's over. Now it's time for the good stuff. My final roll of Sinistro 800T shot in my Canon Rebel T2. Most of this roll was shot in New York City, but you will see a few shots from Frank Muth, Michigan, and a couple from the Circle of a Pumpkin show here in Ohio. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show.
If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get a fresh film photography video delivered every week. And stay tuned to the channel for that roll of Amber T-800 coming soon. Until next time, do some good, have some fun, and shoot some film.